This episode is presented by Roman. Guys, let's talk real for a minute. You know how when you're wearing a great outfit, everything just looks right and your confidence is absolutely soaring? It feels like you can walk into a room knowing that you're on your A game, am I right? But hear me out. 52% of men struggle with ED of some form during their life. If this sounds like something you have faced, I really recommend dealing with it with the help of today's sponsor, Roman. So if you've been struggling with ED, don't ignore the issue. Instead, face it head on with Roman. Roman can give you that same feeling in the bedroom. Roman offers a discreet process from start to finish. Roman can connect you directly with a U.S. licensed healthcare professional for a free telehealth consultation from the privacy of your own home. The provider will find the treatment that is right for you and prescribe effective medication if it's needed. The whole process is honestly super simple. Prescription ED treatments are safe, they're effective, they're FDA approved and used by millions of men. Roman also offers free 2D shipping and the whole process is so honestly simple. So if you think this is something that will help you, you can head on over to GetRoman.com slash Craig to complete your free consultation and find out if this is the right treatment for you. Oh. And if you're prescribed by using my link, you will get $15 off your first month of ED treatment, which benefits us both. So go to the link. That's GetRoman.com slash Craig. GetRoman.com slash Craig. How many times have you come across a car that looks ridiculous, almost as if the owner built it as a joke, like this one or this one? <laughs> Surely they weren't serious. Cars like these tend to reflect poorly on the tuner segment, and it's a big reason why outsiders mock us on the tuner segments. The producers of the Fast and Furious movies literally called these cars rice rockets and all of the paperwork when I was working on the movies. That's how Hollywood perceived us back then and still so much, and still pretty much the same way today. But the trend of tacky cosmetic modifications goes back decades. Today, these cars are often called ricey, a term that has been around for at least 25 years and probably longer. But the term ricey no longer applies to just Japanese cars. Owners of some domestic cars have joined the party with vomit-inducing creations like this abomination. What? Uh, so what exactly is rice? What are they talking about? Someone once proclaimed that rice was an acronym for race-inspired cosmetic enhancement. Bullshit. 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 There, bullshit. There. Man. The true definition of rice is any part or modification that a person adds to a vehicle that has no real function other to make the owner look like he's cooler, or at least in his head. A good example is anything that you peel and stick on your car. A car like this is not really ricey. It's a spoof of a ricey car, probably owned by a guy who would, likes to fart in a crowded elevator and then hit the emergency stop button. Did you f fart? fart. Oh. He's just making basically mocking the tuner segment. But these days, it's getting harder and harder to tell when some people are just being obnoxious or they just have really bad taste in car mods. So here comes a nickel's worth of free advice when it comes to automotive styling mistakes you should avoid. Number 10, performance badges that fool almost nobody. <laughs> it's a fake. Putting a TRD badge on a Corolla SE and adding an Alibaba wing and mud flaps, not gonna fool anybody. <laughs> Typically speaking, the BMW and Mercedes owners groups are notorious for doing stuff like this. I've seen M badges on almost every model of BMW ever produced, and most knowledgeable car enthusiasts know damn well that your car isn't a true M or a true AMG. The irony though is that these days, BMW is now putting some sort of M Sport badge or M badge on pretty much every vehicle they sell. For those who don't know, there are three basically rungs in the M ladder. The lowest rung in the BMW M ladder is the M Sport. M Sport is actually just an accessory package that can be pretty much added to almost any BMW. So it's just like paint and trim and stuff like that. One step above the M Sport is the M Performance. And an easy way to distinguish between the two is by the badge on the trunk. A 340i with the M Sport package, for example, will just say 340i. The M Performance version of the BMW will be M340i. And while M Sport is mostly about looks, M Performance adds some genuine speed. The M Performance cars may be the fastest and most powerful trims available, but BMW officially considers the M products as separate models due to the extent of the performance modifications. That's why official M vehicles don't have trim designations. Example, the M3 just is called the M3, the M4, M5, that kind of thing. So if you're doing that kind of stuff, it's like rocking a fake Rolex watch. Aficionados know that they're fakes and the people who don't know don't matter. So stop it, you look retarded.
Lamborghini door is on another number nine. If you're wasting money on these things, you've clearly been watching too much Pimp My Ride. Lambo doors serve no purpose. They make it harder to get in and out of almost any car, and it's just a pain in the ass. And you're not impressing anybody by putting Lambo doors on your 2005 Corolla SE. What are you doing? <laughs> Spinner wheels, 1998 has come and gone. Let it die in peace for God's sake, at least for this thing. Popular at the time, but today there are so many great wheels on the market. Why not pick something fresh, something interesting, something more modern? And speaking of wheels, at number seven, black wheels. I have never understood the people who spend thousands of dollars on wheels and then finish them in black. Even when parked, you can barely make out the details of the wheels. Why did you pay all that money for a wheel that you can't even see? Why bother? It makes sense if you're sporting 400 millimeter calipers with carbon ceramic rotors, but if you're not, some would say that you lack imagination. Oh, I just can't make a mine, just do a black, okay. And back in the days when I was working with magazines, many editors of magazines thought the same way. Black is unimaginative. Number six, the donk trend. Now I realize that I am not the target audience, but <laughs> I do have something to say about it. Now, in my mind's eye, if you're a pimp in New Orleans, this is probably a style that you would appreciate. What started in Miami in the 1990s, originally with the Chevy Caprice crowd, because those cars were basically not valuable to anybody, it's now spread like COVID to parts of the Southern USA. And like lowriders, some of these cars are very detailed in their craftsmanship. And while it used to be that this crowd stuck to old Buicks, Caddies, Caprices, and Palas, now some people have started to convert some of the classic and valuable muscle cars like uh, old Camaros and old muscle things, that kind of stuff. And that's where I want to draw the line. No way. Not this time. Destroying inherently valuable pieces of automotive history is never cool. And so if they could just stick to the B bodies and that kind of stuff, they'd be fine. Number five, louvers. Big in the late 1960s and 1970s, mostly because window tinting technology hadn't really developed yet. So the only way to keep the sun out of the car was reliably was to put louvers on the windows. Now that made it functional, okay? Somehow, what was a functional thing back then and very helpful five decades ago has now become a horrible trend. Louvers on, say, a 1969 Mustang or maybe other cars of that period is fine and even period correct. But putting louvers on an R35 GTR may give others the feeling that you've never looked at a Japanese Japanese tuning magazine. It's, it's a fashion faux pas and it's really not becoming with, with these modern JDM cars. At number four, the Carolina Squat. I've talked about this before. This trend wasn't just obnoxious and silly, it was deadly. Trucks with the nose pointing up at the sky minimizes driver visibility, so much so that one driver actually ran over a car in front of him that he never saw. It's now illegal in, in Virginia and with and other states are in the process of developing similar laws after a fatal accident. Number three, stance. Cars look better when they're low. I agree with that, I totally get it. In fact, when companies unveil their new models at car show, they're always slammed, and I'm okay with that. But when you're running obscene camber and the car is dragging on just normal roads or you're getting high centered, on a speed bump, it's just dumb. You're destroying the car little by little, and then sooner or later, you'll be selling that car to some poor fool who had no idea that you funkified that car and trashed the undercarriage. Not only will you have to spend money unnecessarily on fixing parts of your car as you're doing this stuff, your resale value will be crap. Getting your cars really low was goes back uh, at least till the 1950s and 1960s. I had friends in the mini truck crowd, they'd be driving their pickups down the freeway, and they would take pleasure and having their vehicle so low that it pulls up the white dots, the bots dots out of the freeway. And of course, every time they were doing that, they were breaking things or smashing things or tearing up the undercage and all that kind of stuff. And after a couple of months of that, those cars were basically junk. So I get it. It look, cars look cool when they're low, but that's kind of silly stuff and you're just, you're just doing damage. And if you really can't control yourself, please consider only subjecting disposable cars to this insanity. Number two, big wings on slow cars. If you're putting a stylish spoiler on your car, that's always cool. But putting a $150 Alibaba giant shopping cart wing on a car that A, has 100 horsepower, or B, on a car that will never do a lap of racetrack is silly and unnecessary. Even people who know nothing about cars, that your wing is as useless as tits on a nun, and knowledgeable car people are embarrassed for you. 
And at number one, the worst mods you can make to your car are, are stick-on bits, like, a, like what I said at the top of this. Basically, anything that you simply glue on or tack on that serve no purpose. Mud flaps, if you're not spending your weekends competing at an American Rally event or driving your Subaru or Evo, which is set up for rally, take those ridiculous things off. I saw one of the other uh, uh, cars and coffee on a Mustang. Why is the street Mustang having mud flaps? Chrome bits. If you're peeling and sticking chrome tra trim pieces on your car, you're either trying to turn your ride into a Tijuana taxi cab or you're drunk. This also goes for stick-on or fake vents. It's bad enough that Toyota put fake vents on the GR Supra, but if you go out and buy peel and stick vents or scoops, it's the same thing as stuffing a rolled up sock in your pants to try to make yourself look more manly if you catch my drift. Let's be honest, if you're shopping for your mods at the accessory aisle in Pet Boys, you're in the wrong hobby. <laughs> Uh, people are very judgmental here, unfortunately. But look, many people want to modify their cars and add some styling bits. And I realize that not everybody can afford a Liberty Walk body kit and custom built wheels, but there are plenty of tasteful mods that not only make your car look better, they also make your car perform better. And if you're working on limited budgets, start with wheels and springs. Not everybody can afford Volk TE37 wheels. I get that. There are plenty of companies that make good replicas. Graham Lights 57DR wheels are about 400 bucks a piece. Motegi MR150s look the same and they're nice too, at about 230 bucks each. And there's another company selling them for about 150 bucks. Other companies like Vossen and Vorsteiner make some very nice and relatively affordable wheels. So if you're spending, you know, 1,200 to 1,500 bucks on wheels, that's good. That's a good investment. Wheels make the cars, so make your choices carefully. Carefully. Three piece wheels are not necessary at this level. A good forged or lightweight cast wheel would be great. Lightweight wheels help reduce unsprung weight, which helps acceleration, braking, and provides better handling. If you don't know what an unsprung uh, weight is, you need to look it up. To get the stance right, there's no need to buy coilovers if you're not tracking your car or if you're not trying to slam the car to the ground. Stick with a set of lowering springs from companies like HR, iBox, Swift. They all pretty much use the same machine. Uh, the set will run you about 250 bucks. If you need lower, you're gonna to have to do a coilovers. If you're going to add aero to your car, start with a front bumper or a front splitter. Choices will be limited for some cars. For example, a 2003 Toyota Camry uh, might not have many choices, but cars like a G35 or G37 will have many more options. One other piece of advice, don't make your first mod a rear wing. Get all the other aero bits on the car first. It just makes no sense to put a big wing on a stock looking car. Of course, your car is your canvas. You're free to style it as you please, but if you're looking to build something that would be considered classy, stylish, and something that will make it look like you know what you're doing. My tips will help steer you in the right direction. And I see this all the time at Cars and Coffee. People are showing up with cars with modest modifications, but it, it's clear that they're doing it in steps and those people can be respected. But the very best piece of advice I can give is this. Do not spend good money on bad cars. Trying to make a 1995 Hyundai Excel perform better or look sporty, it's really not worth the time, the money, or the effort. And if you're putting money into that, you're throwing it away because you're never gonna get it back. It's better to save up for a better platform. And I know this from my own experiences and so my son's experience as well. He will test it as well. You may not have the funds now, but if you work hard before long, you'll be able to step into a better car. And as you get older, you start to make more money. The cars you buy will be better and better and more fun to modify. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.